Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Turgut. This is the second video and I'm the, this video series, we are building a restaurant app and, and for this restaurant app, we are building a question and answering system. In the second video, and I'm going to show you how can we build question and answering system. We will build our own vector database. How can we vectorize our data sets? We will use in memory and we will fetch data sets with our retrieval, then we will send this uh, uh, related answer from the, that our database, send it to language model and answer the, our customer question. Okay, um, let's get started here. Uh, so we are just reading this data and I already read it. I, I run this code because uh, I don't have a GPU and it will take some time because we are chunking some data and, um, and downloading some models. So we read this our data and and here, and as you can see, we have our sentiments and this is the most important thing. We are going to use our reviews. Okay, so how can we just tokenize our data for question and answer? Um, Thing. This is just uh, um, getting our. Um, I'm getting our our tokenizer from the hugging face. This is their code from Transformers import auto tokenizer, and this is the model we are going to use here. It's um, it's a small model and just really easily import and it's really powerful. And as you can see, we will just get our model and. These are our reviews. So let's just uh, see how our model works. I'm just, uh, I get a, I write a question here. Where can I find good pizza in Boston? And I, I provided a context here for our model. Some of the best pizza you can find in Boston. And this one is from actually, um, this doesn't have a good pizza though, but this this is the best of set a bunch. Uh, this one is from our um, our model, and it's you can see this one. This is the context, and let's see how our, our tokenizer is tokenized our inputs. So we gave the our question and context, and we will get our inputs. As you can see, these are our inputs, and if these zeros are indicates that uh, our question and the ones indicates our um, context token. Okay, uh, and as you can see, they are separated by this uh, 102 token, which is separated. Okay, uh, let me just, uh, you can decode your inputs. I explained this part in my other YouTube video about uh, how can you take, um, use this uh, language model as a, as a feature extractor and we, I build and I train um, classification model for sentiment analysis. Okay, so as you can see, um, this is just our decode our things. And as you can see, this is our question and separated by this is the, our answer. Okay, we can now it's just in our transformer, we can get our question and answer hat so just run our uh, input for with just one forward pass. So this is a pre-trained model. So from transformers, we are in, in, uh, importing the auto model for question and answering, same model, same checkpoint. And we are getting this model, which touch no grad. We don't have to calculate any gradient because we are not trading and we are sending our inputs here and we are getting back our um, our logics. As you can see, these are the uh, largest return band. And I'm going to get just, you know, start and end logics here. I mentioned and I explained why we are using starting logics for classification because they are uh, usually information is accumulated there. So they are really useful and tried and really get with you a good result. As you can see, this is the size. This is our uh, token size for the tree. And these are the you know logic shape start and end logic shape, and we are getting the this uh, and we are just getting the scores here and just flatting those and and also getting our tokens. Uh, so these are our. Uh, let me show you. These are our scores, and we will get the. Uh, we will use this scores and and for visualization. Let me show you the tokens here. 
as you can see, these are the, our tokens, which is um, for the three tokens here. Okay, uh, let's keep going and let me just run this and we are enumerating the tokens and give them a number. And we are here, um, so we, we are using our um, visualization libraries from Python, Matplotlib and Seaborn. We are just creating, we are just building our figure and just as we are just creating a bar plot and we are getting an X, uh, axis we are getting the our token labels I showed here and that will be scores in the y axis. When you run this code, as you can see here, we are getting our results. And this is as you can see, these are the our scores and pro, uh, returned by our uh, language model. As you can see, this is the highest score. And that means when we run our model, we will get the first of all this token here. Okay, uh, as you can see, this one is some. Okay, uh, let's just look at for the uh, end token. As you can see, for we are changing the Y uh, label here, and we are changing Y axis, the end scores. As you can see here, this is the highest score here, which is Boston. If you remember our question, so that means our sentence will start with the sum and end with the Boston. What was our question? If I return the question, our question, where can I find a good pizza in Boston? And this is our context. And from the context, it's used sum is a beginning and Boston probably this part of the sentence. Okay, um, let me continue and let's run the and all um, logics and get to real answer and our question and this is the our answer which is correct okay so in here um let me just um show you this uh why is pipeline not defined okay okay that was no problem okay so uh, as you can see where can i good where can I find a good food? I change question. There is no pizza. There is no um, Boston name passing. As you can see, our model smart enough to find answer Boston here. And this is the score what we are getting. Okay, so, so as I said, this language models has an input token limits. And when we send a longer text, uh, long, uh, longer than the their um, expected input length, it will truncate it. That will cost us an information loss. How can we solve this question? I will show you here an um, example. Uh, let's say, um, um, let's say just send this. Okay, um, this uh, we get this variable. I think this one is not long enough. Let me just change the max length here to 20 and just change the stride to 10. And as you can see, that means we were just using the return all flowing tokens means we were using sliding windows. That means we will get the first 20 token, then stride 10. If you guys maybe remember from the convolutional network from the stride, just we are just passing the 10 token, then start. So we were using the first sentence, the last 10, and then moving the second. As you can see, let's just run this. Sorry, I just, let's, if you run this, as you can see, um, we have two, 17 window. And of course, it, this is a small example. We, you need to change this one is the max length of the, your model, which is 256, I guess, in this situation. As you can see, you are saying, yeah, as you can see, Yeah, as you can see, it's just changing and you you were seeing a different part of the, our sentence. How was the day of service? This is the, our question, but the context, according to this question, we order pizza and let's, it starts as that here, pizza, this is the last taken. And as you can see, that one starts 3 p.m. So it will help us help our model to find relevant text because it's not going to truncate it and it will see every, all information is together. Of course, there's some high parameters you can so uh, use it. 
Okay, so in this task, question answering task, you need, um, so when you, uh, so we were just giving the question, so question asked by the customer or, you know, uh, company, but as for, we gave our contacts, but in this real scenario, we have 256 reviews. How can we just give all this um, answer? So what can we do is, uh, we can create a, a vector databases. Vector databases basically means you are just, uh, instead of the, in your normal relational database, you're just sending your data. But in this part, we were just separating those data to chunks, then getting their uh, embeddings, that means their vector representation, and then sending them there. Usually we are using index because you can't just give a general answer. I will explain that one a little bit later too. So let's say um, we have in our restaurant, we have three sections. One of them is just for pizza. Other one is just for, um, let's say, subs and other one for uh, drinks. And if customer, uh, if your customer asking a question about your uh, drinks, and if you use whole information, it will be, you know, hard to fetch. It will take time. And also you will get a lot of irrelevant results. So we will just, you know, reducing our dimension using this index. In big companies, let's say, you know, in, in Amazon, there is an instant code and you can just find relevant reveal for that product. Okay, we are going to use ChromaDB. Why we are using ChromaDB is open source is... Um, you can use it for long chain uh, and it's really useful. So I, I always try to prefer the open source. So it's for, you know, supporting and just contributing them. And thanks to them, they just great. And we also installing sentence transformers. We need that one. We are installing long chain. So we will use that one. We are importing Chroma DB. And from the Chroma DB, we are uh, importing sentence transformers embedding function. So this function is basically when you call this function, there's a default embedding models. When you just sending the, when you are getting embeddings, many uh, language model use different embeddings. If you are using the different embeddings, let's say you are using chat GPT and your embeddings come from different model and that will cause a problem because those embeddings are different meaning for the, let's say, um, the different meaning in different dictionary. So here, uh, let's import this one. And we are using the by default one is just this one, uh, mini LM L2. So we just call our embedding function, just ignore this. Uh, there, 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 yeah, there shouldn't be a role. Why I, there was why I don't know. And we are getting sentence transformers text splitter. We were just splitting chunks, making 250 because our models limit. And there is no overlap, and this is a token splitter. And just checking there is if there is an, any NA, and there's one NA, and we drop that NA value. Okay, so here um, we are importing NumPy, and we all the import the NumPy, I believe, but and just we are getting our reviews as a list. So, be, and I will send this reviews. Let me show you here real quick. These are our reviews, and we will send it to our, uh, we will create our uh, vector database using this review. This will, um, uh, basically, Chroma DB client, we were just getting, and Chroma client create collection names reviews. I already run, I will not run this because I have to change this drive because I already created. And embedding function is embedding function, which is this one, uh, sorry, uh, this one. And then what we are going to do, and we are just getting the, our IDs, just basically uh, IDs are just one to length of the reviews, just one, two, three, four, five, and you always need an ID, it's just like an index. And we were just giving IDs, IDs and documents, documents are our reviews and Chroma collection counts. And we are just giving the how many things and 224, which is how many reviews we have. In here, um, uh, uh, we were just printing reviews and first review and length of reviews and total chunks, as you can see here. And this is our first review, Da Vinci's Pizza. This is our company name. 
And uh, we are going to visualize this embeddings. I want to show you how our embeddings looks like in our vector database. In this uh, purpose, we are going to use UMAP because UMAP is different than the PCA. PCA is it reflects uh, dominant reflects the you know the closest part to uh, those um, those vectors uh, to in two dimensional. Uh, space, but U UMAP is a different algorithm, and it's um, it's usually trying to um, protect the structure of the, our data, which is show us uh, you know how our embedding server looks like. Okay, so we import the UMAP here, embeddings and embeddings, and we are running this. I already run this, and these are the project embeddings and we were getting an empty, uh, we are just creating a, this function is I uh, take it some code from the Chrome of course from the um, deep learning AI, I will leave the, the link and the co-founder of the Chroma, he just explained everything is really well. And here is we are just enumerating the embeddings and just returning the UMAP embeddings, okay? We were just, and then we will just send it to our uh, UMAP, <clears throat> function okay so we are just getting this one and then so we were sending this one and this is the umap transform we were just using this umap transform we already just important here and then we were just what we are doing here umap embeddings we are creating empty links and then um, length is our embeddings and two dimensional and then we are just getting the enumerate them to kdma to kdm is just basically give you you know uh, this uh, bar here. It still takes time. That's why I'm not using this one. As you can see, it's uh, four minutes to uh, twelve second. And then what's happens? You map embeddings. Each one going to each one is just getting our embedding for one by one. That's why it takes time. Two hundred twenty four times. Just we are just running this one, and we are just you map transform get that embedding from and then return those embeddings. Okay, we will just project data set embeddings and we are sending this embeddings and the UMAP transform here. This is our embeddings, this is our UMAP transform and that's getting the result. And with multiple outlib, we were just um, creating the visualization here, just giving the first part, the first part of the, our projected data set embeddings and the second one and just getting the our data. As you can see, this is in the two dimension. This is how our data is looks like. Okay, um, and actually, you know, um, this visualization a little bit improved as you can see what we are inside it. We can see. Okay, let's just uh, send the question and let's just send this question and where this question answers are uh, related in our data set. This is our question. Let's run it, and then we were making to query. We are doing query to our um, vector database we are just querying query text is our question how many results we want five you can just uh, pick it and as you can see uh, we are getting the retrieved document and we are printing those and excellent pizza relatively affordable price we are just asking price which is relevant of course there is no price in here but of course you can add piece of prices in those document too, but also you have a menu, you don't need it. We were just, you know, make an experiment with real world data. This is a real world data and just the, the, this data is not perfect because I just find it in the line. I, I showed you how I find online. In here, well, let's see, uh, let's ask this question. Is there pizza is good? And print the document, pretty good pizza. They chop the vegetable and stretch away the percentage and it's fair. Pizza is always very greasy, it's not good. So wait, there are different learnings. Okay, um, let's get this uh, project embeddings and let's see those question and answers, where are they? Okay, it's running here and then, okay. Is their pizza good? Okay, as you can see, uh, there was a problem. As you can see, there are some answer is really question the uh, vector dimension in our vector database, which is this one. But other ones, as you can see, is really far away from the answer. This is a problem. And there are some ways that, you know, you can improve this. And also, as I said, this is a really, first of all, this is a really general data. We were asking is pizza good and we have really different answer 
in vector database is just, um, yeah, as I said, is if you arrange your answers, contacts in, in a way, and you will get more you know, relatable result. And there's an improving ways. For example, you can create um, fake result from the, let's say, uh, your text generator language model and just, um, and then merge this answer with the uh, answer from your database and just uh, just merge that those questions because because we are asking is the pizza good it's just really uh, you know not really best style question and but you can just you know create different question but using language model and ask those question and get more you know exact relevant this way it's just you are increasing to you know make sense getting makes sense and but let's just you know ask an irrelevant query who is the president of the us we're asking the our model and, and as you can see here and and these are the uh, let's see let's make a visualization here and just see how it looks like we're running this one um for example we get a really close result i expected the most of them is much more okay there is no close answer because our question is really irrelevant from the this Okay, uh, this is just a showcase, um, as I said here. Um, okay, uh, how can we answer those questions using the uh, language model? Question, what is the price of the pizza and get a result? We were getting our results, you know, the results from the getting our data sets. But uh, I'm just making results and um, this one is uh, retrieved documents because results are different, as you can see here. Okay, do you see this one is embeddings, distance, metadata, and stuff like that. And we were just getting, we need this part. Okay, this is real long. Sorry about that. Anyway, um, let me show you actually. You will see this is a very um, different part. As you can see, we need a document and document in the zero. That's why we are using this one. And then, as you can see, this is, uh, there is a, some part of in the list we were using the this join method as you can see let me just get rid of this one first of all Oops, where are we? I lost it. Where are we? okay um okay so we, where we are yes okay i lost the where okay this one let me just delete this one we were here and as you can see we were just joining those documents and getting our context this is the context and the, uh, we were just getting the end result is five, and this is our context. And what was our question? What is the price of pizza? Excellent pizza, relatively affordable price. And as I said, it's just similar. As I said, this is not actually a good question. We should just change the question, but uh, let's just pipeline this question and answering. This was our model. We would define the size and just sending the, this one to our model, excellent price on the front of it. Affordable price, very excellent piece of oh, These are the, you know, the answer um, from the model. This first two is really cost our answer. But as I said, um, this question, um, this question actually could improve. What is the price of pizza? And you know, is pizza is pizza uh, is their price expensive? Is their price expensive? This is expensive. Grammatically correct, but let me just run this one. Still best on the sense I'm going to analyze. Let's say just change this and it says expensive, unreturned it, expensive, expensive. As you can see, this is that question is much more relevant. Okay, we are going to generate answer is using I important uh, a lot of stuff here in the hugging phase, LLM chain, um, not, not hugging phase actually, actually this one is from the hugging phase, length chain. As you can see, um, I'm not going to, I, I first decided to GPT-2, but uh, to get a bit result because it's still on GPT-2, some takes time, I'm going to use OpenAI API, it's just easy. <laughs> Okay, just let's ask this question. Do you have a pepperoni pizza? Okay, we are asking the, let's say our vector database and query task is question and top five results and include documents and um, yeah, embeddings. I don't even embedding. Let's get the documents. These are the contacts and 
let's see the context of pepperoni. Okay, so the, you get the pepperoni resolved. Sicilian pizza, some of pizza I ever had, a lot of pizza, a lot of pizza, and so on and so forth. And let's just get our other language model and let's context and let's, these are the, our answers. So we were just getting the question and what is the result? This is our retrieval and these are the result and we are getting those results. So in the question answering, there is two things. You were just, you have a retriever, which is after you get those relevant results and just using retriever. Okay, let me show you the answer here. Sicilian half piece of pepper and half roasted pepper, Sicilian and yeah. So there's a relevant document and we got it. Okay, this is our, the, you know, open AI, uh, open AI key for me and script key. You can just, you know, from here, you can create your own script key for this thing and, and okay, so import daytime. And these are the, you know, which open AI model you should choose and I'm pip install open AI. Okay, just chat open AI temperature. This is our uh, LLM model. We are getting this temperature. Um, you can just, uh, chat. we are getting our API key and this is our template. We create a template. We are going to use, uh, um, um, link chain here, you're a helper in the pizza, in a pizza restaurant. This is the question asked by customer question. This is the, uh, this is the answer from our database retriever answer and answer. Please answer our customer's question using the retriever's answer. Prompt, we are just creating the prompt. What is the question? Uh, this was our question and this was our answer okay now we got the uh, data from our database and we were just using this template and using chain LLM chain and just sending that prompt this is our input data what are the ultimate data question and answer this is how the uh, chain works and yes then let's produce the response Yes, we do have pepperoni pizza, our Sicilian pizza available in half pepperoni and half roasted dressed pepper. We highly recommend to trying out Sicilian pizza as as my customer said, is some of the best pizza they ever had. This is our, uh, okay guys, and this is how this question and answering system works. Of course, there are other ways you can use, let's say you can use Elasticsearch for you know uh, your search and just creating a vector database. Of course, you can use any other language model too. But in this case, I use OpenAI API because I don't want to uh, you know deploy this model in somewhere and just use it. Or we can just use Hugging Face Text Generator. But this way is really easy. Thank you so much for watching video. Hopefully, I'm going to create um. That's a Python call and just use this code and just embedding and create a user interface that's just connected with a restaurant. And then we will just have a feature question answering feature um, with language model. Uh, hopefully see you in these videos too. Thank you so much for watching my video and uh, stay tuned and hopefully see you soon.